Okay, in this video we're checking out the Tyrannus FreeSky X9 Lite. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy and politics surrounding this radio. I'm not going to get into any of that in this video. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have probably already seen videos on that. Uh, this is just basically going to be an introductory video to this playlist. This is going to be the first of the playlist of this model uh, where I basically will show you what this does and also go through the firmware updates will actually improve what this can do because right now in the current state that this radio is in it has all of the flaws that were mentioned in a lot of the other videos basically it's got that access protocol does not work with d16 or um, any of the d8 receivers and you know free sky is just getting uh, uh they're getting a lot of basically a lot of crap out there in the fpv community because you know, of the sort of what they're trying to do by shifting the market towards this um, new access protocol versus the old ACC ST protocol. But the I think they've heard all the noise and they are now, um, I guess, backtracking. And uh, there's a firmware update that came out on June the 6th that will uh, basically allow for D16 uh, capability. Now, I don't know if Crosswire is included in that. I know that there are nightly builds that you can download on OpenTX that um, will enable crossfire and d16 so i'm going to have uh, some future videos on that one it's, it's gonna uh, if i include all that in this video this video will be like an hour long and i try and make my videos like 10 minutes or less at the most so you'll have to wait for a future video on that but for this video we're just going to go over what this feels like um, and sort of my initial thoughts and impressions and like who this radio could be possible before it's a little bit lighter and smaller than the what this radio is based on, which is the old X9 Plus. I'm not sure if it's going to come on the video, but it is a bit smaller. Not like a huge amount smaller, but it's definitely a bit smaller. has fewer switches. Uh, there's a two-position switch here up on the left corner. A momentary switch over here. I actually wish this were switched. I would prefer this to be my arming switch over here. So I may do a video where I swap these. If you guys want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments. We have a three position long switch here, three position switch here on the left, and a three position switch here on the right. And we have a dial here with a detent, uh, with centering detent right there, speaker there. You got your normal on off switch like you do on the QX7. It's not a slider. So you have to hold and you know, press and hold it to turn it on and off. You got your trims. These feel the same as on the X9D+. Plus. And the gimbals feel pretty similar to what's on the X9D+. Plus. I don't know if there's that much difference in terms of the extents. It does feel pretty stiff. The springs are pretty stiff. But I'm pretty sure that we should be able to open this up and adjust that. There's a lot of you can hear that ratcheting on the throttle, which I do not like. So I, I can just tell you right now that I'm probably not going to be switching to this from my jumper radio, which you can see here, size comparison. Uh, the jumper is smaller than the X9D, or X9, uh, the, uh, sorry, the X9 Lite. And yeah, so I'm probably going to be sticking with that just because of the size. And the other thing is... Um, the batteries need to be removed to charge, so uh, this does not have the charging circuit that the X Lite Pro comes with, so uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just a small cost, probably 10 bucks. But the batteries go in this bay here, 18650s, and um, something you should, should note if you have the 18650s like I have here, where they're they're flat on the top and the bottom. You're going to need like a little piece of metal, like I have a little metal magnet there in between the batteries. Otherwise, it won't power on because there's no, there's no contact here. So shout out to uh, Kebab FPV for pointing this out to me. I was I asked him like why his why mine wouldn't turn on. He said, well, you should check the batteries. And apparently if you have these kind of batteries where they're flat, um, you're going to you need to make sure that these two batteries are in contact with each other with either a piece of foil or some sort of metal, you know, be careful that they're not shorted. Uh, make sure that it is, you know, I think it's a negative over here, positive here, and, I'm sorry, positive over here, negative here, 
positive here and negative there. So just make sure you do put it in correctly and make sure that they're touching each other. Otherwise they won't turn on. I, was, I, had the, I had the batteries in here and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't turn on. So that was pretty annoying. And then they have this uh, expansion bay here. This is the same size as what's on the X-Lite. And it's pretty hard to open. And this the, this bay is a little bit configured differently than the X-Lite, so it's kind of set in further. So if you have something that works with the X-Lite, it's not going to, like, like the crossfire adapter, it's not going to work here. So you're going to need some, some sort of other mechanism or some other sort of an adapter if you want to use uh, crossfire in here, uh, and, and if you want to use the crossfire micro uh, module, which is actually a full size, or actually bigger than what fits into this bay. And this door is pretty annoying in terms of getting it in and out. There we go. Another thing I, note, I forgot is that there's no rubber grips on the back here, it's just plastic, so uh, there probably will be some, I think there's already some third party stickers and things you can put here that'll give you some extra grip if you don't want the radio slipping out and then uh, also another thing to note is that this where the neck strap goes in here this is a this is plastic not metal so if you hit this pretty hard on something you could possibly break it uh, in terms of uh, uh, the button functions on the screen it's open tx 2.2.3 these buttons here and the scroller wheel everything works the same way as it does pretty much here on the x9 uh, X9D Plus, so if you don't have the scroller wheel, I think uh, these buttons work the same way, but then this scroller wheel works like what's on the QX7, so it's kind of a, uh, I, I, think, I think this is actually an improvement over here. And let me just show you what the, um, what firmware is on here. Okay, so we'll go into the uh, radio setup here. This is the current firmware. It's uh, OpenTX uh, 2.3.0, not 2.2.3. Sorry about that. So yeah, this this is firmware is dated uh, May the fifth, or sorry, May the seventh, 2019. Uh, and the latest version uh, that's just on the FreeSky website just came out yesterday was um, June the sixth. I'm going to be putting that up on here in a future video, and I'll actually show you how to do the firmware upgrade. Now if we get out of here and we just go into the model here and let me just show you. Okay, so go into the model and if we just show you, obviously there's a different way of um, uh, uh, binding up your receivers with this new ISRM type of uh, uh, transmitter here. So it has like this kind of, actually I'm going to probably cover this in a future video, but basically you can see here there's three receivers you can have per model. So you can have multiple receivers per model, uh, which is different. Whereas before, if you had a model here, you could you could um, bind up multiple, say, XM Plus receivers to the same model. But then the, the, you could also have the reverse where you could have multiple models, um, uh, multiple sorry, multiple transmitters uh, bound to the same receiver which you can't do on the old ACCST system so kind of confusing I'm going to get into that uh, more down the road uh, after I've done the firmware upgrades and then I get some receivers that will uh, do this actual function because you have I think the currently the, well, if you have this ready the way it comes only the RXSR receiver will do that and, um, I'm not sure if the XM plus receivers will do that after the firmware update that I'll have to find out now, um, if you want to turn off the internal module, let's go ahead and turn that off. So basically the internal module is either ISRM or off. So those are the only two options. And if you have the external, if you want to use the external module right now, these are the only options you have available to you. PPM, ISRM, DSM2, RIFR, 9M access, S bus, and that is it. it looks like, yeah. So uh, definitely very limiting. Uh, there's no multi-protocol support here in this firmware. Um, I'm not sure if any of the nightly builds will allow you to do that either, because I know that I have a multi-protocol module that will fit the slim bay here. So yeah, uh, I'm going to do the firmware upgrade, and we'll find out. If there's anything that's additional that will work on this be beyond the D16, because on, on the external, I'm 
I'm hoping that they'll add Crossfire in the official firmware update, but obviously I haven't done that yet, so I don't know. Okay, a couple more last things before I end the video here. You do get these uh, nice little gimbal protectors that are included. So you can use those if you want to protect your gimbals. Um, you do have on the bottom here, micro SD card slot, a uh, S port here for uh, usually for updating your receivers. You have a headphone jack, micro S, uh, micro SD port, and that is for connecting up as a simulator if you want to use that as a USB for a USB port. Uh, or you can uh, connect it to the uh, micro SD card to transfer data models, for example. And then you have a DSC port here. This is uh, basically your wired trainer port. This port does not uh, charge the batteries, which is a huge disappointment. Another reason why I'm not going to be switching to this radio because I have to pull these batteries out, and that these actually it's not it's not actually that easy to do. So, hoping that they'll uh, offer an update at some point to allow you to charge the micro USB port on the, I think the X-Lite Plus, I'm sorry, the X-Lite Pro will let you do that. And I actually got that as well and have a separate video on that one as well. I have actually a separate video series on the X-Lite Pro. So that's going to do it, I think, for this guy uh, for now. I will have another video shortly on the firmware upgrade and how to do that because there's a few things. It's a little bit different after I actually upgrade the, uh, I think there's uh, the radio itself, the firmware, and also the the module, or the internal modules so that uh, it'll actually enable D16 mode or whatever else that, uh, they've enabled in the in the firmware. So stay tuned for that video. That'll be coming up pretty soon. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.